This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Remarkable Results Radio. I'm your host, Carm Capriato, and the pioneer of automotive aftermarket podcasts. Hey, thanks for being an active participant in my mission to advance the aftermarket. You know, I love having conversations with my guests and industry leaders. We all benefit when we teach each other. I had the privilege to speak with the Apex 2021 Service Award winners while at Apex. Now, be a fly on the wall as they discuss what it was like to receive the call that they were award winners and what it means to them. They were selected based on the guidelines of the nomination process and the final voting and filtering from industry professionals. Congrats again to Matt Fonslow, Eric and Jamie Carlson, and Brittany Schindler. Your awards are well-deserved. Thanks to our partner, NAPA, for providing this episode. You know, the NAPA Auto Care Gold Certification Program offers a premier tier for members to provide consumers with a consistent experience anywhere in the country. Gold certified members earn benefits like preferred referrals, $1,500 in marketing funds, tracks for free, and more. To learn more about gold certification, speak to your NAPA representative today. Don't forget to connect with me on social media and my Carm Capriato YouTube channel. You can also email me, carm at remarkableresults.biz, B-I-Z. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's jump into this great episode. As you know, we're here to pay homage and honor the winners of the second annual Apex Service Awards. We happen to have here the technician of the year the service manager of the year and to top it all off the shop of the year with me is jamie and eric carlson from irvine's auto repair and grand rapids hybrid hi guys hi carm how are you hello bud hey nice to see you matt fonslow's here the technician of the year i'm sure everybody believes i'm here in your podcast i'm not sure anybody would believe i won technician of the year yeah you know i, I still was, don't I, I was, still don't believe it yeah when i saw that i said this can't be. The standards have dropped significantly. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, over the years. You could continue to be humble. Uh, I don't know. Somehow, you may have earned that. And uh, Brittany Schindler is not here. And in place of her is her dad, Rod. Hi, Rod. How you doing? Glad hey, to be here. Good with to you have Carmen. you here. Two years ago, when this whole thing was created, uh, and we announced the first, the, the, the first three winners in Virtual Apex, and the person who has really been the spearhead of this is Mark Bogdansky, Vice President Auto Care Events, right, Mark? Close enough. And this, this, this honor will continue year after year and really, in my opinion, pay incredible homage to what I believe the top of the mountain in the industry is, and that is the service professionals. I mean, things we do every day to service the customers, to fix the cars, and to, and to run these, you know, 250,000 plus independent shops we have all around the country. So thanks for being here. When you got the phone call, Jamie, you said to yourself, it's just another one of those honors. Every couple of years, I just keep getting an honor. So can I, can, before we even get that, the, my, the, my favorite day of the year is getting to call the winners for this award. And the reactions from all three of you, or from Britain, from all three of you, that was fantastic. So I get Matt on the phone. Matt's like, who's putting you up to this? There's no way. Who's putting you up? No, it's real, I promise. Yeah, whatever. I said, I'm going to send you an email with all the information. Yeah, I'll see if I get the email, whatever. <laughs> Spam. Still doesn't, still doesn't believe it actually happened. I emailed Jamie because I couldn't get her on the phone because it was a Monday. You guys don't work in the shop on Monday. I, I emailed Jamie. Within 30 seconds, I get a phone call. Is this real? <laughs> this is so exciting. I can't believe it. I call Brittany. I get Brittany on the phone. She was working in the afternoon. She gets on the phone. She's so excited. She had no idea she had gotten nominated. I think none of you guys actually knew you got nominated. You all got nominated by different people. I don't think anybody knew you got nominated. It's just really the best day of my year is being able to call the winners. It was like that last year with the first ones. It's like that this year with you guys. And I'm so happy that, A, you guys were able to win. B, I was able to deliver the message. And C, you're all able to be here in person to receive your awards this morning. It was fantastic. So, Matt, it's real. <laughs> I mean, I'm starting to believe it a little bit. <clears throat> Well, you know, you've got to stop playing that uh, Humbler Than Thou program here and accept the fact that uh, you have your own podcast now and that you're the technician of the year. So, I don't know, don't wait till 2023 for it to sink in. Okay? 
I, I, I mean, not that winning doesn't mean anything. It means a ton. But the fact that somebody took the time to, you know, fill out the application or make the submission, yeah. that means a ton. Just, just knowing that means so very much. I, I wish I could put it in the words. And then winning is just, it's still surreal. I don't have a better word than yeah. surreal. So, so let me break the code here. Brittany who's not here but her dad Rod is here I believe you submitted the application for her didn't you? Uh, sort of <laughs> sort of okay <laughs> yep. well great even yep. if it was a combination yep. fine yep. and and you guys who submitted yours do you know? your daughter Megan. yeah your daughter and Matt a good friend of yours submitted yours Bill Nalu. Yep. and it's got to be an honor to have someone that you know feel so strong about the fact that I've seen the questions and their and the qualifications, they're pretty high. And and you know, Mark, it, it gives some credit to Mark for having a great filtering process. You know, we when we started this, Carmen was actually very instrumental in putting together the program. I said to Matt, when I, called, I said, "Nope, we got a bunch of." He said, "Am I the only one who's got nominated?" I said, "No, nope. <laughs> a lot of nominations. We had a great judging panel. No, we have a you know, we have a very esteemed judging panel that goes through every one of the applications. They take their time reading through each one." And uh, there were multiple, lots of nominations for each one, and uh, it just—it was fantastic that you guys were able to able to win. And I will say, Bill Nellu is actually two for two now because he's nominated both technicians of the year because he nominated Norm last year who won, and he's nominated Matt this year. So we got to see who he nominates next year. Cause, oh yeah, hmm? yeah. Obviously, Nellu is going to try to keep his streak going. <laughs> yeah, everybody can email me the bids, and I'll I'll hook you up. What one of the fascinating things about Jamie? And, and Eric is this. Years ago, you guys were brilliant enough to rebrand your business or to create another company called Grand Rapids Hybrids. And that's one of the genius things I, you know, I, I tell people all the time. Your story. Anyone saying, if you're, are you into hybrids yet? No. Well, you need to have your town hybrids. You know, Las Vegas hybrids, Grand Rapids hybrids. I thought it was genius. How successful was that rebranding? Well, initially, you know, we were hoping to get one hybrid a weekend and look at it. That didn't even happen. It was one hybrid a month. And then it got up to one a week. And, and now maybe half the cars in our shop are hybrids now. You know, we might go through six to ten cars a day. You know, we don't have a tremendous volume of vehicles like that. But... It's been huge, but it took a, it took a while to get that off the ground and get going until people I don't want to say took us seriously, but even realized we were there that there was someone besides the t the dealerships that were working on them and and really wanted to work on them. So, so please use this as a, an encouragement in your own business to, to do this. Uh, in, in your particular case, Jamie, you were you won another award a couple of years ago. Uh, the woman in auto care mm -hmm. is the shop owner of the year, right? I'm with Matt. I have imposter syndrome as well. But if you come to Women in Auto Care, they can help you through that. We had we had a big <laughs> seminar on that. You know, as soon as you as soon as you win the award, you start devaluing it right away. But it is. Um, we weren't even ready for any of those. And had I not gone to my first Women in Auto Care and met Kim Auerheimer, and then went to a Smart Group which was with Cecil, but you know, I mean, there's, there, there's all different groups where you can go and get help. That was huge for us. I mean, we've had our business since 1994, and in the last five years, we've grown exponentially, I think, in, in wisdom, you know, not, not just in sales, but just what it's meant to be connected. And I think it's probably about the same time Eric was on your show the first time, and we started listening to you and just what's out there and the networking that we can get because of you. Thank you so much. Jamie just said something really important. I don't want to ignore it, that they decided to go out and get help. Getting help is not a bad thing. It's like a technician going to training. It's like a technician getting the right tools. It's like the technician keeping journals and, and, and knowing what and how they're doing and why they're doing it. And to get a business coach, or to, to join a group, to join a 20 group, to join a business development group, and then to get together and network and see each other's shops, you're going to give credit to, the, to that as one of the single most important things you've ever done in your business. This is why I'm here advancing the aftermarket. This is what I do. And I'm humbled and grateful to everyone who's come on the show to, to, to share those stories. But here's the shop owner of the year. 
uh, at, at Apex 2021 who's telling you, that's one of the secrets, okay? And, and by the way, we're sitting in, inside of Joe's Garage in Repair Shop HQ, is sponsored here by Apex. It, literally, I have the best seat in the house where I can see these beautiful eight bays and all of this technology and all of these demonstrations going on that if you're listening to this post Apex 2021, and you've heard me say over and over again, AAPEXshow.com, that's the place you have to go to be here next year because I was talking to Mark over here about the plans they already have. This isn't even over, but they've got plans for 2022. So this is going to be one of those, one of these events that you need to come to every year because of the effort that the Auto Care and, and AASA put into Apex. So th- that, that's my that's my total feel of, of why we're here and why it's so important. So Matt, is this going to make you a better diagnostician? I'll probably just throw it in cruise control now. I'm, I hit the big time. <laughs> <laughs> just coast. Well, Matt, I, I need to coach you about that. Oh, that wouldn't be smart. It's editable, right? Or we're going to edit some of this. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I just don't anticipate me changing much, right? I, I think if anything, this just reinforces the hard work and financial investment, time investment, whatever is is paying off. Not only in the bays, but it, it gets recognized, and not maybe not the stuff I do in the bay gets recognized nationally, but. You know the the forum you've provided me with, uh, you know, your podcast as well as now the aftermarket radio networks. That's starting to pay off, and the the topics we cover mean something. Not just on cars, but like personal type stories or issues within our profession. And I think this just reinforces it to keep going, you know, and push harder. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And and I and I did throw you a wild curve, figuring that you take a laugh in the beginning. But you ground yourself in the value of this great honor. Thank you for that. Hey, Carm here. Now, coming up, find out what it's like to have unconditional support from family members that work in the business with you. Hey, it's Carm here. Today, I have a special message for Napa Auto Care Centers who are looking to take the next step in growing their business and partnership. Now, if you're ready to strive and take it to the next level, Napa invites you to consider... Gold Certification. Gold Certification is a premier tier of Napa Auto Care that recognizes repair shops with a higher level of participation in the Auto Care program. The program was built by Auto Care Centers for Auto Care Centers to provide a consistent consumer experience, maximize technology leverage, and reward Napa's most committed partners. When consumers visit a gold certified auto care center, whether it's a small facility in a rural community or a multi-bay shop in a large metropolitan area, they can expect a first-class service repair experience. This includes a well-trained staff using today's technology and quality Napa parts in a comfortable, up-to-date facility. Customers at gold certified shops will also enjoy an extended parts and labor warranty, valuable saving opportunities, along with access to credit to pay for needed repairs, and a whole lot more. Here's what you need to qualify for the program. First, you need to be an active auto care partner for at least 12 months and have a steady business presence in your market for at least two years. Then to become gold certified, it's necessary to meet specific requirements that chosen because they create the most consistent consumer experience and proven to generate the most significant results for auto care centers across the country. Some of these include using digital vehicle inspection, having at least one ASE Master Certified Technician, a co-branded exterior, and offer consumer financing through NAPA Easy Pay. You must also be an active member of a business development group. Once your shop achieves gold certification, you'll receive a number of benefits, including priority placement on NAPA's shop locator pages, an allowance for marketing funds, 3636 peace of mind and local labor coverage, access to auto tech training, NAPA Tracks shop management system, smart sign digital menu board, and more. Talk with your servicing NAPA store to find out everything you need to know about becoming a gold certified shop. Rod, uh, since Brittany's not here, tell us about Brittany. Oh, can I tell you everything about her right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm, I'm honored to be here on her behalf, behalf and... Uh, I'm sorry she's not here today. She ceases to amaze me. She's, I, I started training her, I believe it was 11, 12 years ago, and she owed me money. 
and I had her do some stuff in the office and and I thought well you can do this to pay off you know the money that you borrowed and she was filing papers and doing stuff for me and she was like 16 years old and just young and and uh, um, didn't know anything about cars didn't know one thing didn't know how to do anything with cars and but she and knew she could get out of debt with you she didn't know that and she wanted a car and that was one way she could do it so wow so she worked her way on uh, up from that and I, I started teaching her the basics of uh, doing service writing and you know as we needed her to fill in that spot because I was doing all the wrench turning at the time and uh, after that then she's just kind of taken off and blossomed them and she runs circles around me I can't even keep up with her there's there's nothing that I could even I know, got a little so. bio on her yeah. uh, local community charitable she, she's really involved absolutely what kind of stuff we do all kinds of stuff in our community we donate back we try to keep as much local um, as we can she's headed off different um, fundraisers and stuff like that we've done had a big o open house at our shop about three years ago that uh, was a fundraiser we support our local schools stuff like that she's been really good with that so, any kind yeah. of training did you get any kind of training for her She's been with ATI, oh, and good. Okay. Um, that's where everything's just taken off. Um, excellent training through ATI. It's just been a big blessing now. So it so, goes to yeah. show you here is a, another shop operator that yeah. committed to coaching. You know, when I read over her application, one of the things that really struck me was her commitment to make sure that the customers understood what they were getting and that they, you know, they fully understood and cared and understood why they were going to spend the money they did, which sounds like a gimme, right? I'm sitting here with the shop owners of the year, and they're going, well, you better do that, right? Yeah. And the tech of the year is going, well, they better explain it if I'm going to do the work on it. But I think it's not a given. And I think it's really important that the person you have there, the service advisor, is spending that time doing the customer service and caring to make sure the customer understands what's going on. And that's one of the things that really struck me when I read the nomination. Absolutely. And, you, you know, that's the big thing is because we, that's one thing we really strive to educate our customers. And we're huge on that. We want to know what the customer is getting and want them to understand. And we make sure that they understand. You know, on top of all of that, she, she's she been writing SOPs for the business. And she'll do that in her, not that she has spare times, but when she, there, we, there's a need for that. And she'll just start typing it out and writing um, SOPs, we have hundreds of them now. That way we can keep everything uniform and everybody on track. It's one of the secrets so. to running a great place. Uh, I saw in, in a little bit about her application that you've had huge growth in the last five years. Absolutely. We've expanded and we're busting at the seams. Uh, we actually um, bought another shop in February and we've expanded into the European side. We were mostly on the Japanese side. Now we're doing Europeans and diesels and hybrids and uh, electric vehicles. Even. Evolving and growing. We're so proud of you. That's that's wonderful. Matt, in your case, are you doing any training per year? How many hours do you invest? That, that I attend training? Yeah. Um, I mean, minimum, usually minimum 80 hours at the at absolute minimum. And that's not taken into account some online content or you know, right or wrong. You know, I'm not selling anything because it's a, it's a double-edged sword. I read an awful lot of uh, SAE documents and um, patents, and sometimes they can give you some really nice insight into what's really going on, and sometimes it opens up a can of worms. Well, I'm just so thrilled that you found out that he did coaching. I thought you know, just it was the three of us, and Matt had ignored coaching for yeah. years, but it turns out not. I mean, I got an opinion, and sometimes they, <laughs> people take that as advice. And Hey, Jamie, Eric, having your daughter in the business kind of like Rod, how has that changed you guys? You know, there's a little bit of, well, our other employees are cream of the crop. We couldn't ask for anything better. There is something about family, and I think that... That goes both ways, and that also, you know, Megan and I will trade off who's there, and, you know, you kind of can do things on the fly. Um, but she doesn't work there because she can't get a job someplace else. She has the same values we do, which, some, you know, somebody else could too, but we like her. We, li we like all of our kids. <laughs> <laughs>
So what's that nice, like? So it's, it's nice to have her there. Yeah, it truly has worked out very, very well. You know, she's she's very responsible when we're not there. She knows what we want, how the business is supposed to be run in our eyes, whether that might be right or wrong. Uh, but she follows through on, she knows just what our temperaments are and our our ethics and whatnot. And she has, of course, her own, but they mirror ours in many, many respects. So it's very it's very nice and, and comforting to have her there when we're not there. Good. I get that family piece because there's Tracy, right? Right. Right here. <laughs> Trust me, I, I I get that I get that daughter feeling, that family feeling for you know Tracy jumping in with both feet, editing for years, and now who's directing all my content and, and producing on top of still editing, and and it's 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 so great to have family, and especially if family contributes and it, you allow them to do that so thank you my dear what about apex what are you doing here you, did you sign up for classes or are you just here to get your award and show it off we actually did but could not get in and all they were sold out there was a little snafu if only you knew someone that could have helped you with that <laughs> well there's there is another one we would like to get into so well yeah. let's see mark here mark here's 20 bucks see what you can do for the posts <laughs> But yes, we we are we are starving for classes. I mean, just you know, over the last year, year and a half, it's not only seeing our friends and networking. It, it is yeah, it's yeah. the information and kind of geeking out on automotive stuff. Let, let me share a thought or an idea. If you're, and again, I know it's too late, but never go to a conference knowing you can't get in, knowing people won't show up, and that in at the door there may be. You know, 10 seats left because people didn't get on a plane, they didn't come, something, life happens, right? Right. And, and for you to go out and maybe hover over that door and say, is there any room we would love to come in? Oh, okay. we have plans. <laughs> okay, great. Good. Glad to hear that. Matt, are you going to do any training while you're here? Um, attend? I don't know if I have time. I would love to. Yeah, you're I on camera. You, you're on so many interviews. I, I know. Yeah. It's, it's There's this trainer I've heard of, I don't know, Thornton, I kind of wanted to go see. but John's here? John, yeah, I think How did you get John morning, Thornton, uh, Mark? We, we made the decision to invest and get the best trainers, the best coaches, and the best people here. And that's what we've done. Oh, yeah, cool. I'd, I'd love to. But honestly, yeah, we've talked about this before. You can learn a lot just attending the trade show, going to the booths of the equipment you own or are interested in. You can learn stuff about a piece of equipment you've had for years. You didn't know it did something until you stopped by the booth and said hi and stole some candy. And then they just, you know, maybe you heard, overheard somebody asking a question. And then you kind of lean over and, I didn't know mine, mine does that? What? You know, the overheard thing is really probably one of the most important words here. Because biggest takeaway is networking, meeting new friends, not being bashful and hanging out with a group in a crowd and introducing yourself. There isn't a conference that doesn't bring that huge value, but you have to be, you just, you can't be a wallflower at a, at a conference like this. And to your point, Matt, don't be bashful to go into a booth and say, I own this, I haven't used it in years, can you show me a few tips or tricks, right? Yeah, and it's not always some big sales pitch. Sometimes they have, for lack of a better term, sorry, a legit tech there, a technician, somebody that uses the stuff day in and day out that can answer your questions like a technician and not a sales, you know, from a sales point of view or what I heard in the meeting, you know, three weeks ago, this is somebody that uses the product. They know exactly what you're talking about and they can walk you through what you need to do using the piece of equipment you own. So you bought my product and you don't know how to use it. And if someone doesn't spend time to bring value to what it is that they sold you so that I bought this, it's supposed to be the greatest but I can't use it, I don't know how. So I'll buy, your, I'll buy the competitive one because someone said that that's just as good. But there's no just add water and instantly you have a tree. No, no. Well, right? And we found that just by going to some of these booths, you get the card you know, or a phone number to somebody that helped design the doggone thing or is, knows this thing inside and out and has told you, call me anytime you got a problem. Wow, And yes. you've got an unbelievable database there of people you can call that have got every answer you could possibly want. I'm pretty sure that's the clip for the next Apex ad that we run with you guys. It's right there. So. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Tracy, remember that when we're cutting clips later. So, so think about this. What Eric said 
In fact, Mark, you get so much credit for putting together something that really looks like a production facility here. You know, there's cars in Bayes, a lot of things are being done. It's, it's almost like this little, rope, this machine that's working. And to be able to go up and say, you know, I'm struggling with that. I don't know how this works. Where does that plug into? And on and on and on. And you walk away with 10 times the investment you made in Apex, or any of it for that matter, that you're going to use over and over again. And in fact, you're going to go back and you're going to teach it. And when you teach to your people, you learn. And, and you guys are proof of that. You would have never given this, gotten this recognition had you not invested in yourself and in the industry. So we thank you for that. You know, I'm just sitting here I'm listening to you guys, and it is no wonder that the judges picked you guys. Because, you know, I listen to you guys, you say, look, we put a hybrid in our name, and it took a while, right? And it'd be very easy to just we put it in, it doesn't hit right away, and we're going to give up. But you stick with it, and the next thing you know, it's working for you. And that's really important. And let's face it, if you're not working on hybrids in five, ten years, you're in serious trouble. So you got out ahead of that already. But the stick to itiveness and to make sure, you know, we didn't just give up right away, that's huge. That's what makes a potential shop owner of the year. Seriously. You know, Matt, Matt says, how much training are you doing? Okay, Matt's obviously already a fantastic di uh, technician. And he's still doing 80 hours, 80 hours a year. Tell you what, 80 hours, that's two weeks right there. That's most people's vacation. And he's doing that much training. That's what makes you a phenomenal technician. And all we hear about is customer service and that she cares for, Brittany cares for her customers. And that's what's gonna make a service advisor so because they're gonna trust her. And they're gonna to wanna, to, you know, they're gonna to wanna to listen to her and take her advice and everything. And that's what makes these guys such winners and Brittany such a winner. It's, it's phenomenal to be able to hear you guys and really to be able to hear your story and those takeaways from this for that. My takeaway on what Mark just said was common folk. You're just common folk that care. It's, it's obvious that the winners care deeply for their family, their business, their customers, their life, their world. And that where I think is the rec where the recognition came from. Yeah. What you can learn from this is that anything is possible that you can win an award this prestigious as the Apex Shop Owner, Technician of the Year, and Service Advisor of the Year. Thanks for coming in and doing this fun episode i think it was and for us to pay honor and homage to you guys and for mark to to have these awards number one and to put together this incredible uh spot i mean upstairs uh, of us is the big big show where you get lost and you're like a peanut but down here you're somebody <laughs> we're with our people Ah, we're with our people. And that's what we want. And yeah, that's what we want. Jamie and Eric Carlson from Irvine's Auto Repair and Grand Rapids Hybrids. Oh, by the way, hybrids have been around for 20 years, guys. And, you know, so, it, well, I'll wait till there's more. Stop it. Okay? <laughs> Matt Fonslow, shop manager, lead diagnostician at Riverside Automotive. And from the Matt Fonslow Diagnosing the Aftermarket A to Z podcast. And, of course, Rod, representing Brittany Schindler, service manager of Rod's Japanese Auto Care in Bellingham, Washington. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.